Hello everyone, welcome to ACE Online and welcome to Daily Current Affairs session. We will have a very short uh, session today. We have very little articles uh, relevant for our exams. So first one will be Office of Governor. We will have a little bit more discussion on it. Uh, so recently you might have followed, uh, any, I mean at least the social media. So there was a issue in the Tamil Nadu governor, right? Who has uh, rejected to accept the minister. Then now today was accepted. Right? So we'll see it uh, in detail, don't worry. Then Australia, United Kingdom and USA, AUKUS initiative. So we'll discuss about this as well. And today we are celebrating Shahid Divas 2024, right? So we'll see about it, what is the background and a very important article related to the Lepakshi Temple, which is located in Andhra Pradesh, right? So there was an article in Hindu about uh, Lepakshi Temple. So it will be relevant for our exam. There is only one fact. And then finally, some practice questions. All right. Yeah, very good evening, uh, Malini and uh, Rajkumar. Welcome to the session. Yeah, fine. Let's start with the session. First, the office of governor. The context, I'll explain the context, but let's understand the background. A minister, K. Ponmudi, in the Tamil Nadu government. So a minister was there. So he was removed as a governor because he was charged with the corruption charges. So it was, uh, you know, felt that or pronounced by the High Court that there was a corruption charges which were uh, being inquired against him, the central officers, ED, Enforcement Directory. So that's why this person was removed from the cabinet minister post, right? After that, this person has went to the Supreme Court, right? So against uh, the judgment, so Supreme Court has quashed the judgment, there is no proper proofs. Okay, let's uh, uh, remove the restriction on him. Then we will see in the future, right? We are still, we are going to hear about the case. So as of now, the cases against him, uh, no need, I mean, it is not about quashing completely, but let's not, uh, uh, what you call, uh, remove him from the cabinet ministry. There is no restriction as such. Let's wait for some time, we will pronounce, then you can take the measure, right? So after removing from the uh, minister post, he went to Supreme Court and Supreme Court has halted. Now, again the Council of Ministers, that means the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, has asked the Governor Ravi, RN Ravi, to reappoint this person into the ministry, right, the Cabinet Ministry. But RN Ravi has denied for a few days that Supreme Court has not given clear uh, indication to reappoint, rather they just uh, halted the process, that's all, right. Now, uh, again, they went for Supreme Court that this uh, governor is not accepting the Ponmudi into the cabinet minister, right? Supreme Court has given direction to the governor that you have to follow the, I mean, the directions given by the chief minister or the council of ministers. So governor has no discretionary power in this, in this case. Whatever the chief minister says, you have to appoint. So this person was reappointed yesterday, right? So this is all the background in brief. He, he was removed from the cabinet minister post. Then uh, he went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has quashed or halted the process. Then again, he was reappointed by the governor on the recommendation of the chief minister, right? But this is just the context. But why is this issue? Why governor has uh, rejected or delayed the process, right? So those are all, let's go, uh, let's discuss about that. So the questions can be framed related to the governor. Anyway, there's a lot of questions as well. You might be aware about it, right? So the governor is an important post. Before discussing the constitutional provisions, I want to explain you about the Indian federal structure, okay? So India is a federal country where there are different states like Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana. So there are 28, 29 states are there in India, right? So they have sufficient powers. We have a three lists also under the seventh schedule, the state list, the union list and the concurrent list as well. So the powers was clearly devised between the state and central government. Now, though it is a federal country, India is a federal country, but it is called as a quasi-federal. Quasi-federal, unlike the USA. USA is a complete federal uh, country. So whatever the 50 states that they are having, they can come out of USA whenever they want. But India is a similar to, quasi means similar to. India is a quasi federal, that means powers are sufficiently given for states, but that does not mean they can come out of the Indian Union, right? So it is a rigid one, that state government, any states cannot come out of India, unlike the 
USA federal country. Also, the territory to change, the geographies of the states to change is completely under the parliament itself. So there is no role for the state governments in terms of geographical division, right? So that's why here comes the role of governor. Why governor was being appointed in every state? So it can be right, uh, the constitutional makers could have been done without even the governor. So we have a min uh, chief minister and then council of ministers to rule in the states. But why there is a role of governor? This is because, as I said earlier, the union, though it is a quasi-federal, it is tilted towards the union. That means the states have no power to come out of it or go against any of this union government or parliament related measures. They cannot go against that. So to check the role of states, in every state there will be a governor who will be appointed by the president. And president will appoint based on the recommendation of the council of ministers. That means central government. Central government will tell to the president and president will then appoint the governor. So governor is there as an agent of the center, right? So as an agent of the center to bridge, to uh, you know manage the bridge between the state and central government and also to check the excess power or whatever the constitutional principles that are being followed or not in the state. So the governor post is there, right? So this is the actual role of governor to check whether the states are following the constitutional principles and of, or the measures completely uh, with the synchronous with the union government. So something uh, to check the role and act as a bridge between the center and states, the role of governor is there, right? So there are certain constitutional provisions that are relevant for our exam. Article 153 under Indian constitution is the one which talks about the post of governor. So this article says in each and every state within the Indian Union, there should be a governor. So this is the article which talks about the post of the governor, right? Now, it also says that one single person can be appointed as a governor for two or more states. So recently you can see Telangana government has been, uh, Tel Telangana governor has been resigned to participate in the elections in Tamil Nadu, right? So the chief uh, governor of Chhattisgarh was appointed. So one single person can act as a governor for two, three states together, right? There is no such restriction. But every state should have a governor. That is a mandatory thing. Now, so he acts as a, he or she acts as a bridge between the center and state government, right? Also, article 157 and 158, both these articles talks about the eligibility of the post of a governor. Who can be appointed? Can I be appointed as a governor? Or can you be appointed as a governor? So there are certain rules and regulations which are kept in the constitution itself. The constitution itself talks about the minimum requirements that are to be satisfied to be appointed as a governor. So he should be a citizen of India, he or she, right? So no other uh, citizens are appointed or eligible completely uh, at the time of appointment, he or she should be the citizen of India. And also, age should at least be cross age of 35. Like, similar to the president, who is uh, 35 years age at least should, should, should be there. Similar to that, the 35 years of age should be there for the governor to be appointed. And this person should not hold any membership in the parliament or state legislatures, like MLA, MP, from whether Raj Sabha, Lok Sabha, he should not have any uh, political post to be hold, right? So that is one thing. And not hold any office of profit. Office of profit means the money, any post that is already getting money from the government, right? Any government, state or central government. So the governor who is to be appointed should not hold any such office of profit, which is earning from government already. So these are all the eligible conditions for the governor to be appointed, right? Now, the term of govern uh, governor's office is fixed by five years. The constitution itself is clearly mentioned that the governor should be, the term of governor is five years. But anyhow, they can be removed by the president. So the council of ministers at the center will say that you should remove this person to the president. So president will remove the governor, right? So the president has the authority to remove the governor. The dismissal, however, should be not uh, what you call uh, without any valid reason. Supreme Court in many of the 
judgments has clearly said that you are removing the governor, but there should be a valid reason. Without valid reason, you cannot remove the governor. So there is no such bro or like process like to remove any Supreme Court judge or any of the uh, election commissioner of India. So there is a process to be followed. Yeah, a bill has to be put in case of Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha, and then both houses has to follow. There is no such process to remove the governor. President can remove the governor anytime, but of course they have to have certain valid reason. So this is the process. And also the governor, he or herself can resign and he can uh, give it to the resignation letter to the president directly, not to any other persons, only he can submit it to the president. So this is the removal or the, uh, what you call uh, term of the governor, fine. Now the issue comes here. The, uh, we have discussed that the governor R.N. Ravi has not appointed or uh, made part of the cabinet to Ponmadi, right? So this he used as a discretionary power, but only in certain cases, governors can use their discretionary powers. Rest of the things, they have to follow the rules and regulations or the constitutional principles, right? So that's why uh, the con this particular context is very important to understand our background. There are certain discretionary powers. Discretion means on his or her own. Nobody there to guide, right? Unlike other powers where there is a constitution, there is a rules and regulations, there is a, uh, other things uh, who are guiding them. But in certain cases, he or she no need to ask for anyone. It is a discretionary power, right? So the appointment of chief minister when there is a no party has clear majority. For example, there are 100 seats and one party has got 45 and other party got 30 and then some other party got some 20. So there is no clear majority. At least 51 seats has to get to elected as a uh, head of the government, that is chief minister, right, to form a government. But if there is no such party got elected in the elections, then yes, governor has the discretion. Of course, this discretion is not long term. He has to ask to prove within 30 days, right? Within 30 days, if that person who is appointed will not be able to prove his majority, then he also will be removed, right? Anyway, this is considered as a discretionary power of the governor. Whenever there is no party uh, got majority, so he can appoint anyone uh, he wish or she wish, right? So that is one discretionary power. And in times of no confidence motions, so whenever there is a no confidence motion passed against some government, so for example, government A is there and all the political parties in that state have passed no confidence motion. All the members have supported it, right? Now the government has lost the majority. So in such cases, again, government role will, or sorry, governor role will be a discretion. So whatever he can take, he, he will take the uh, decision. Of course, in the background, the president and the central government will be there, right, to guide the governor. Also, in case of failure of constitutional machinery, there are certain constitutional rules and regulations mentioned in the constitution. And if state government is not following those things, then also governor has the discretion. So the governor can establish a president rule, right? Deploy a president rule uh, by saying that the constitutional principles has been violated by the state governments, right? Or any state government. Of course, there will be a Supreme Court, uh, whether this is really against the constitution or just it is a gimmick, right? So this is also a discretionary power of the governor. And then finally, the power to withhold any assent of the bill. So any bill, uh, any act to be made by the state government has to pass through governor. Governor has to give the assent. So in case of that also, governor has the discretion whether he can reject, whether he can delay, he can pass it to the president. So it is also a discretion. So only in these four cases, the governor of the, in the state has a discretion. But now what R.N. Ravi has done, he has not appointed the member who was selected by the chief minister as a cabinet minister. So this, there is no such discretionary power to the governor. That's what the Supreme Court has said that only in these four cases you have discretion. But why you are acting on your own discretion, which is against the constitution, right? So this is very important to be remembered. Now, there are such certain issues with the governor, right? So briefly we will see what are all the issues in the last few decades uh, we have faced with related to the post of governor. This will be also asked in the exams in any way, whether in terms of prelims or in write-up, whatever exams you are writing. So these are all the popular issues that were arised through the post of governor. First one, affiliation-based appointments. 
So there are two different governments at the center and then states. And then the power to appoint the governor is with the president and of course there will be a council of ministers to guide. Now they are appointing those persons based on the affiliations. They are using the political post. There are a lot of governors who were acted as MLAs, MPs in different states. And those people were being appointed as a uh, governor in the states. So it is a contradictory to the views of state governments and the central government. So this is one biggest issue. So in 1988, Sarkaria Commission has given certain suggestions. So they may ask you this as well. Many times it was asked. Sarkaria Commission was appointed to study the role of governor in the political Indian political system. So this committee has asked that the person should be detached from politics. He or she should not come, uh, I mean, not connected to any of the politics, any of the political parties, right? Also, Venkata Chalamaya Committee in 2002, they have asked that appointment committee should be there rather than directly president appointing. So, prime minister, home minister, speaker of Lok Sabha, and then also chief minister of the state. So, to whatever the state that you are appointing, the state chief minister should also be part of the committee, and he or she should also give suggestions. Uh, before appointing that person as the governor. So this is a solution or recommendations given by certain committees. Next, arbitrary removal of the governor, especially when the government has changed. For example, now the elections are there in May. Take example, right? So there was a lot of governors across the states, of course, 28, 29 states, we have governors. And after change, if there is a change in government, some political party, some different political party has framed the a government. So all the governors are removed. We can take example historically as well in the emergency times in 1977. So whenever there is a change in government, so immediately all the governors were dismissed by the new party came into the power. So this is completely against the constitution. So that's why this is one, one of the biggest issues whenever there is a change in political party at the center, there is a arbitrary removal of the governor. Sarkaria Commission has given certain conditions. So if someone want to remove, if government want to remove gov uh, governors, then it the ground should be clearly mentioned. The constitution should amend and only on those grounds only the governor can be removed. That is one of the uh, suggestion of Sarkaria Commission. And then Punchi Commission, this is also related to the governor post. In 2010, it should be an impeachment process. That means state legislature should have the power to pass a bill to remove the governor. Similarly, it should be accepted by the president as well. So this is one strong procedure recommended by the Punchi Commission. And then Supreme Court also said that in one of the case, BP Singhal versus Union of India, as we were discussing, right? So in the previous slides, Supreme Court has clearly said that there should be clear grounds on why the reason should be mentioned that why you are removing this particular governor. So these are the solutions. And then misuse of Article 356. There are a lot of, in the last five years, you can, I mean, there are lesser uh, use of Article 356 because of the Supreme Court role uh, here, right? But previously, before like one decade before or two decades before, there was an excess use of Article 356. There was a lot of president rule among the states, right? Whenever there is a president rule, there won't be any power for the chief minister or council of ministers. It's completely under the president and the police is there will be taking care of the state. So this was misused many times in the Indian constitution, Indian political system. So in the Rameshwar Prasad case, the, uh, I mean, Supreme Court has said that if you are, uh, you know, appointing or uh, deploying the president rule, there should be clear reasons and we will check it. It should be subjected to the Supreme Court judgments. Similarly, Punchi Commission has said that they should amend the Article 356 and give more powers to the states, right? Similarly, Sarkaria Commission also criticized this provision that President rule is being misused. Finally, governor withholding the bills. You might have seen in many of the states like West Bengal, even Telangana before uh, October. So there was a lot of withholding of the bills unnecessarily by the governor, right? So this was again... Uh, many times Supreme Court came into the picture and said that you cannot reject the bill, you cannot delay the bill. Either you give the assent or you reject it and send back it. And once again, if state government passed the same bill, you have to give the assent. So the passage of bills are being delayed, right? So for that, uh, there should be a time limit. 
Punji Commission has suggested that there should be a time limit within which governor can act, and if not, the bill will be deemed as passed. Right? So these are all the issues that the office of governor is uh, being faced in the Indian political system, and these are some solutions for those uh, issues. Right? So this is about the post of the governor. So we have discussed uh, very exhaustively about the governor post. We have seen the context, what has happened, right? And then we have seen some important features. We have more provisions related to the governor. It will take one hour for governor chapter. It, more than one hour. It will take one uh, two hours to discuss about the governor. But we have discussed about the briefly, whatever the current affairs related things. And we have seen the issues with the post of governor and solution. So you need to remember these names are also many times have been asked even uh, many of the exams, uh, staff selection commission, UPSC, civil service, they have asked about the Sarkaria commission in 2019. There's a lot of questions. You have to remember these suggestions and you have to uh, you know try to apply as well rather than blindly remembering, fine? So this is about the post of the governor. Uh, I hope there is no doubt. If you have any doubts, you can ask here. Yeah, very good evening, Srinath. Welcome to the session. Right, so that is about the post of uh, governor. Now let's move to the next article, that is AUKUS. Australia, United Kingdom and USA. Fine. So why there is a news about it? The context is Australia and Britain said that they are going ahead with the deal related to the submarines. So you can see here, Earlier it was delayed because of criticism from France. Initially, they, France was to support the Australia, but uh, they have cancelled the deal and they went for UK, right? So they are going ahead with the deal. That's what the small article was there in the Hindu. Now, what is this AUKUS? Australia, U, uh, UK, that is United Kingdom, Britain, and then United States. So these three countries have formed a block or a group like how we have number of BRICS like groups, right? SARC, BRICS, we have a number of such groups. These three countries have formed a group. And for what purpose? It is a strategic purpose. Strategic means anything related to the, uh, what you call defense related thing. And this is specifically for Indo-Pacific region. If you see the world map, Australia will be here and then India. This is all Indian Ocean, right? So this here we have a China, South China Sea and all this region and here we have US. So this Indo-Pacific region is a very volatile and very important, strategically important one. And the role of China here has been increased as it, it, it became one of the uh, you know, major powers in the world. So now these three countries have formed a group and then they are going to contain the deterrence and defense capabilities in the Indo-Pacific region, that is Indian Ocean as well as Pacific region, right? So this is the objective of the group. They are going to contain any excess power being used in these waters. And Australia is one such country which is located at the center of the Pacific Ocean. So that's why Australia roles, uh, Australia's role become very important. And it was established in 2021. Very, very important. 2021, right? Now, there are two important pillars that the also AUKUS works. There are two important pillars that directly mentioned in the website of AUKUS itself. The pillar one is very, very important to be remembered. Development con uh, of conventionally armed nuclear powered submarines to the Royal Australian Navy. So this group is going to give more submarines to the Australia because Australia is located at the center of the Indo-Pacific region and it the role, it has to be strengthened so that there will be a safety in the Indian Ocean, uh, Indo-Ocean as well as Pacific region. You can see that even yesterday, there was a uh, Chinese vessel, which uh, I mean Chinese ship has halted the Philippine vessels, which are going for research. Some scientists are going. It is not even military one. So to contain such events in the Indo-Pacific region, this group going to equip the Australia with the uh, powerful submarines, okay? Also, pillar two is to collaborate and involve related to the information sharing what is happening in the Indo-Pacific region among these countries. So whenever there is a necessary, immediately the powers will come and assist. So first one is to give more submarines to the Australia. Second one is to share the information between the countries, which is what is going on in the Indo-Pacific region. So these are the two pillars. 
Now, what is this submarine component? We have seen that they are going ahead with the deal, with the submarines giving submarines to the Australia. So, the deal is to equip Australia with the nuclear powered attack submarines. That is the most powerful submarines. And Australia will get eight, eight nuclear submarines through the deal. This is also important. They may ask in the statement based, right? So, Australia will get total eight nuclear submarines. These submarines will be based on the design of British, that is UK will British and the technology will be of America. The design is done by UK and the technology will be of USA, right? So this is for the first time that USA is sharing its nuclear submarines with any other country for the first time, right? Because they have more trust towards the Australia. It will enhance the Australia's capabilities right in the Indo-Pacific region. So that is the working nature of AUKUS. This is an agreement between the countries to contain any of the mischievous activities in the Indo-Pacific region and then to strengthen especially the Australia with submarines. So that is about the AUKUS initiative. Any doubts in this? Yeah. Let's move ahead to the next article. Shahid Divas 2024. Right? So this is a, a very historical one. Of course, uh, they will ask you for this in exam because it was a recent initiative by the government. Today, we are celebrating Shahid Divas. That is bravery. Right? So Shahid Divas, which we are celebrating on March, to the, uh, I mean every year on March 23rd. And why we are celebrating? We are celebrating this because Bhagat Singh historically, right? And then Shivram Rajguru, Sukhdev Tapar. These three people were hanged by Britishers on March 23rd, 2024. We will see why they have hanged and all. Just understand that context that these three persons were hanged by Britishers way back in 1929 uh, on March 23. That's why we are celebrating the bravery uh, day, the Shahid Divas to, uh, day, right? Now let's go to a little bit historical one, why they have hanged and all. Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev how or like you know they are very st strong nationalists right they want immediate freedom because this is our land india is our land and who are you to rule here right so they have questioned and they have acted as a revolutionary activities right against the british those times and they have thrown a bomb on central legislative assembly so it is like a parliament uh, like how we are having a parliament now at delhi the same we have a central legislative assembly during the british times right they were ruling India. So they have thrown a bomb on April 8th, 1929. Okay. So because of this, there was a, a there was a slogan on Inkilab Jindabad, a very popular slogan, right? Long live the revolution. So this, they have attacked the Central Legislative Assembly of uh, the in British India. They were, then they have, uh, like, you know, through all the Supreme, uh, the case at the court, they went for the court and there was a lot of discussions on it. And finally, they were given with the death penalty. So on 1931, it is not 1930, oh, sorry, 1929 was a activity that has happened. And 1931, March 23, they three have been executed by the Britishers, right? So after that, the movement has uh, uh, more virulently has spread across the India, right? So this is why they have hanged on those times and because of that we are celebrating their uh, remembering their bravery in the Indian freedom struggle right so that is about the article any doubts in this uh, Rajkumar we have uh, we don't have uh, too many nuclear submarines we have two nuclear submarines as of now that too it is not indigenously developed it was given by France right so still we are under consideration. We have an indigenously aircraft carrier. That means as a, the ship can carry the aircraft. As of now, we have two, but that two is not indigenous, right? We have just leased it from some other countries. Okay, fine. Uh, moving ahead to, uh, to the last article for today. We have only four articles. Lepakshi Temple. Lepakshi Temple was mentioned in the Hindu Andhra Pradesh edition, which is a, a very important article. So where it is located, who built it, what is the special feature, so all these things are relevant for our exam. So archaeological uh, survey of India has unearthed certain stone carvings near the Lepakshi Temple. So this is what they have mentioned in the Hindu. Now, what is Lepakshi? 
Leh Pakshi is a small village, a place located in the Anantapur district near Hindupur in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so it means rice o bird. Leh Pakshi means rice a o bird, right? So it is eagle jatayu. It, this was a mythological one. It is not a historical one. Just making you understand that this bird, when Ravana was uh, taking Sita to the Lanka, it went through this area and. Jatayu, that is the bird, has fought against the Ravana and it was killed by Ravana and the bird has fallen near the Lepakshi. So that's how the name comes, right? So this is a mythological one. Of course, uh, we don't have exact proofs. Yes, it may happen or may not happen. But yes, this is the background of uh, this place, Lepakshi. Now, uh, this place was also having, believed to be, have the footprints of uh, Sita Devi, right? So it is believed to that there are certain footprints related to the Sita Devi here, right? So this is about the Lepakshi village. Now, the most important thing is Veerabhadra temple in Lepakshi. So Veerabhadra is a god in the incarnation of Lord Shiva. So this is the incarnation of Lord Shiva itself, right? This is a Hindu temple located in Andhra Pradesh that you need to remember. The actual existing temple, yes, there may be a temple way back 1000, 2000 years before. We, we have certain proof that there was a certain goddess and all. But the present temple was built by Vijayanagara rulers in 1538. It was built by Vijayanagara rulers. It was dedicated to Veerabhadra, a form of Lord Shiva. This is very important to be remembered. The primary deity is again the Lord Shiva, right? We have, in addition to that, we have Ganesh, Durga and other deities. But the primary deity is Lord Shiva. Okay. This temple was built on the style of Vijayanagara architecture, where you can see the Kalyana Mandapa, right? The Dravidian architecture of temple building. So these are all the features we are having the Vijayanagara temple architecture style, right? Also, there are a lot of paintings there, mural paintings on walls and then fresco paintings beautifully made paintings were available in the Lepakshi temple. And the themes that were used here are Ramayana, Mahabharata and lot of Puranas. The themes of the paintings were made from these uh, historical documents, right? According to Skanda Purana, we have a Skanda, different Puranas and out of that Skanda Purana has mentioned that the temple is significant Divya Kshetra, a pilgrimage site dedicated to the Lord Shiva. So way back, even before uh, Krishna, I mean the Vijayanagara kings, we had a proof that this temple is dedicated to the Lord Shiva in the Skanda Purana. But the temple, existing temple, was built by Vijayanagara rulers. Fine? Now we have one fact related to that, only one fact. We don't have uh, other things relevant for our exam uh, from today's newspapers. So our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji was given with the highest order of Bhutan. That is highest, like how we have a Bharat Ratna, highest order in India. They have one highest order and that was gi given to our Prime Minister. And the name is, you have to remember, Order of the Druk Gilpo. So this is the title, like how we have a Bharat Ratna, they have this title. This was given to our Honorable Prime Minister, right? So this is about today's session. Now let's solve some practice questions from today's session, okay? First question, which of the following are the discretionary powers given to the governor of state? So we have seen the discretionary powers, fine. Uh, we have discussed it. Now let's see which are all the discretionary powers of the governor. Sending a report to the president of India for imposing the president rule. Sending a report to the president of India to launch or deploy the president rule. So that is his discretion they are saying, first one. Appointing the ministers. So appointing the ministers is a discretion of the governor they are saying. Reserving certain bills passed by the state uh, for the consideration of the president of India. So this is the again discretionary power of the governor they are saying. Making the rules to conduct the business of state government. So they have given four and out of it they are saying which are the discretionary power of the governor. So tell me what is the answer for this? 
you can take 10 20 seconds and you can answer we have uh, seen this okay let's go with the very easy statements right so you all know we can eliminate at least one statement anyway we'll come from the far first sending a report to the president of india imposing the president rule yes right so it is his discretion just sending a report related to president rule that there is a violation of the constitution it is his or her discretion so one should be there second one appointing the ministers as we have discussed in case of uh, rn ravi case right so t n ravi tamil nadu uh, governor ravi so he has no discretion that's what the supreme court has said so second statement is wrong it is the prerogative or the duty of chief minister or the council of ministers who can appoint so there is no role for governor here two should be eliminated so answer we got directly that c is the answer fine reserving certain bills passed by the state legislatures yes state legislatures if passed it can be forwarded to the president of india so this is uh, the correct making rules to the conduct of business in the state so it is not the case of governor it is state government itself will make so answer is one three if you could have eliminated this statement that we have discussed and you got the answer so rachana and trida have answered this question correctly fine next one Consider the following statements about the governor. So one more question we got about the governor. Governor holds office during the pleasure of the president. Yes, Srinath, correct. C is correct for the previous question. So governor holds his office during the pleasure. So whenever president want, he can remove. So that is what the statement says. He acts as a chancellor of universities in the state. Whatever the government universities are there, then for that, he acts as a chancellor. That is the second statement. He tenders his resignation to the chief minister of the state. So this is the third statement. So what is the uh, answer for this? First statement, governor holds during the pleasure of the president. Yes, pleasure of the president here means whenever his wish, the president wish, uh, whenever he or she want to remove, so they can remove. Yes, first statement is correct. So B should be wrong. He acts as a chancellor of universities. You may have doubt this because we did not discuss. So just to give you how you can answer these questions. He tender his resignation to the chief minister. No, this is wrong. It is for president. Right? So this we have discussed. So third statement is wrong. And hence we got the answer A. Right? So why B Malni, uh, Rachna Srinath Rajkumar, you have answered it as correct, it is A. So B means first statement is correct, right? So they are asking about the correct statement. So one and two are correct and three is wrong. Next, with reference to AUKUS deal, consider the following statements, right? It is a defense alliance of Australia, United Kingdom and USA. It is established to confront strategic tensions in the Indo-Pacific region. Third, under this, Australia would obtain nuclear power submarines. So, which of the following statements is are correct? Yes, two is A. So, this is AUKUS deal. First statement, yes, it is correct. It is a defense alliance between Australia, UK and USA. Two, it is a strategic tensions to reduce the strategic tensions in the Indo-Pacific region. This is also correct. Under this, Australia would obtain nuclear power submarines. That's what we have seen the uh, tire one, I mean the objective one. So this is also correct. Yes, Rajkumar, Rachna, Trida and uh, Srinath Malni, all of you are correct. So this is a very direct question that we have discussed. So answer is D. Next, which of the following group of all the freedom fighters are associated with the bombing of central legislative assembly in delhi on april 8 1929 so all the three person should involve even if one person is not matching then that is that stands wrong so that's what they are asking all which of the following group of all the freedom fighters are associated with the bombing of central legislative assembly in delhi so this was asked in upsc prelims way back in uh, 1997 right this was taken from upsc so uh, let's see who will answer this. This is a confusing. I mean, you need to remember it. 
4 is B someone said let's see Bhagat Singh Ashful, Ashfukula Khan and then Ram Prasad Bismil Raj Guru Bhagat Singh and Sukhdev Rajendra Lahiri Chadrasekhar Rajad and Sachinandra Bakshi Bhagat Singh Sukhdev and Uddham Singh yes all of you are correct very good I thought you will confuse Raj Guru Bhagat Singh and Sukhdev so these were the three persons who threw a bomb on the Central Legislative Assembly the last question Consider the following statements about Lepakshi paintings, right? So Lepakshi paintings, uh, about it, they have given three statements. They belong to state of Andhra Pradesh. That is the first statement. Paintings date back to Chola period of Tamil Nadu. This is the second statement. They have Buddhist, Jain and Brahminical themes. So these are the three statements. Last question for today. Let's check. First one, they belong to the state of Andhra Pradesh. Yes, this is correct. First statement, right? Second statement, paintings date back to Chola period. No, it is not Chola period, rather uh, Vijayanagaras. Vijayanagaras, right? So second statement is wrong. And we got the answer one only. Anyway, they have Buddhist, Jain and Brahminical themes. No, they don't have any Buddhist and Jainis. It is only of Hindus. Right? So yes, Trida, Rajkumar Malni, all of you are correct. Answer is A only. So this is about today's session. I hope you have enjoyed and prepare well, do hard work and regularly, you know, revise the topic. So it will be really helpful for you. Right? Have a great evening. Thank you.